What's up guys, welcome back. I know it's been a long while, but we're gonna go ahead and start jumping back into things. Um, what I got going on oh, right now is we're gonna be checking out the pickdem.net2 kit. It's the Internet Ethernet Development Board User's Guide. Um, like I normally do, my normal format to my videos is we will look at the hardware first, and then after that we will then check out the software. And since the software is going to be quite involved for this one. Um, we're going to go ahead and check out the hardware here real quick. Shouldn't be too complicated. Um, if you look at it, it seems to be really complicated, but it's actually not. It's not too bad. I'll probably put uh, probably some links down in the description to this pamphlet, I guess you would say. Um, this PDF here, um, I'll put some links to where I, I found it and whatnot. And um, again, the only reason I want to make this very clear, the only reason I'm actually doing the pickdem.net2 kit, I had people question, be like, you know, well, you can just buy a Raspberry Pi. Why do you have to buy a $150 board to do embedded web servers? I'm not. I'm not telling you to go out and buy this. I'm. Not, I'm not telling you to go out and buy this. Okay. Let's make. Let's make that very clear. Very, very, very clear. Yes, you are true. That is true. You are correct. That you can go buy a Raspberry Pi and do the same thing. In fact, I have videos that show you how to do this with a Raspberry Pi. Um, what I'm showing is a Raspberry Pi is a full-blown computer. Kind of like. Kind of like this dev kit is got way more power then you probably need if you're just wanting to do like a web-based thermostat or something like that something simple you know or I don't know a web-based uh, ceiling fan controller or something like that I don't know whatever you want to make out of it the thing is is you, you when you have the full-fledged computer with HDMI and audio outputs and and uh, RCA you know normal regular video I can't remember what the name of that is right now but normal video output but you don't need all that you know right you just you just need some memory to throw a web page on. You need a TCP IP stack that goes to the uh, TTL to you know, TCP IP transistor, all that logic stuff to do all the conversion for you to get it onto uh, a, a network and everything. And like I said, you need the TCP IP stack, the software that can control it all, so all the protocols and everything are correct. That's all you need, really. If you're just wanting to do something where you just go to a web page, you push some buttons, it flips some GPIO around to control some relays or thyristors, SCRs, or what have you, um, you really don't need audio and video and 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 all the other stuff that comes along with um, a dev kit. Or because I mean that's kind of what I think a Raspberry Pi is. I mean they call it oh it's a full fledged computer. Well it's kind of like a de dev kit. It's like a development kit. In fact that's what uh, the the people that designed it were. Uh, kind of shooting it for is it's kind of like a development kit that's really fun for beginners is what they're wanting to do they're wanting to get uh, and actually they're wanting to target kids get kids involved with uh, with um, imbe uh, embedded system development and computers and electronics and things like that that's that's what that's for so it's kind of like a de development kit the reason I purchased this development kit right here this pictem.net I actually didn't purchase it I actually there was an avenue that I could get one of these um, donated to me and I did a video um, on the unboxing video of this I explain all this and I say that it was donated uh, to me from microchip um, uh, through uh, the helpful people at Aero Electronics they helped procure this for me and everything and so I, I it was at my disposal so I got one okay just so I could show you this because otherwise you'll have to scribe your own boards and everything which you can do and I may end up doing a video of doing it I just I, I was I was being lazy and taking the, the lazy road out and I didn't want to have to scribe boards for this I wanted to just have something to just put together and show you how it works and because I think for this it's the, like you're gonna see here in just a moment the hardware is very straightforward on this at least to me it seems pretty straightforward um, like I said, I haven't put one of these together, so it may not be as straightforward as I think, but I don't know, f first impressions is it looks pretty straightforward how to actually hook it up. What's going to be the most intense is going to be the software side, so that's why I just went ahead and copped out and went with a dev kit because the hardware isn't too complicated. Now, this dev kit has everything. It's got LCD screens, it's got RS-232, it's got um, LEDs, it's got switches, it's got, uh, what else, it's got... Oh, 
It's got that pigtail thing so that you can you can hook up daughter boards to it and do all kinds of other stuff. So I mean, it's got a lot a lot to it. So it looks complicated, but when I when you go through it, like I'm going to here in just a moment, it's actually very simple. It's actually very simple how it all works. So saying how how simple it is. Oh, why don't you show us, Mitch? All right, well I'll show you. <laughs> so okay, so we're gonna go down through here and blah 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 blah. This is all about how it works, what we're interested in, and see, I mean, they give you like the, the, it's very, it's very useful. I've read through this, it's very good. They tell you what all the different pieces are and where everything is. They even give you this little, like kind of like breadboard area to put whatever you want down there. They tell you all the different pieces and parts and what's loaded on it to start with from the factory and yada, 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 yada. And there's the, the factory default webpage, which we looked at um, back in the, the first video in this series. We looked at this. But uh, anyway, they blah, 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 I'll tell you all this. What we want, ah, here we go. This is what we want. We want the schematic. We want to know how this thing's put together, okay? So, essentially, you've got a PIC 18F uh, 97J60. What it has is it has the USB uh, controller integrated into it, um, into the actual processor. Now, this board comes with both. It has this processor, and if you, if you notice, it had two RJ45 connectors on the board. What that was for was because it allows you to do development with both types of TCP IP hardware. Um, the first jack is connected stra straight to, and I'll show you that here in just a second, is connected straight to this chip on its uh, pins that are designated for TCP IP, okay? Because it has an embedded uh, Ethernet controller in it. The other one is actually connected to a external uh, TCP IP controller that then I think it's over SPI, SPI, or ICE2C or something like that. It's one of those protocols. I think it's SPI. I think it's SPI. It comes into the, the micro, into this 18F97J60. So that way you can experiment with playing with the external version of the TCP IP controller. So that way you get the best of both worlds. They give you both. They give you one connected where you're using a chip that has it all in it, and then you're using an external chip coupling it to uh, the a microcontroller via SPI and configuring that as well. So what I'm probably going to show you to start with will probably be configuring it, uh, the one that is on board the chip that's already on, on the micro. So we're going to be dealing with this 18F97J60 is what we're going to play with. So you've got your basic stuffs. Um, let's see if I can zoom in. You've got your your VDD core, which is, uh, is your voltage for the core and everything. Which th this obviously this is a big chip, so it's going to have a lot of different voltage pins. And that's what you're seeing here. This pick VDD, they're hanging their decoupling capacitors off of it. Yada yada yada. You know, pretty standard stuff. What I want to show you is like right here, TP out. This is basically transmit for TCP/IP. Is what that's for. This is your positive and negative for your transmit on your Ethernet. And that now that's for the Ethernet that is embedded into this chip, into this 18F chip. Okay, so and we'll see where this goes here in a minute. You got more power here. You got uh, here's the tra here's the transmit the or uh, the receive. I'm sorry, TP in plus and minus. So this is the receive on the uh, on the on the TP yeah the TCP IP stuff. Sorry, had a brain fart there for a minute. Excuse me. All right, more power, more other things. Like they give you tons of options. Here's uh, oscillators and there's a section where it shows you you can you can put your own external oscillator in if you want to or you can put in, you know, cuz you know how all microcontrollers you can either configure the internal oscillator for the main for the main clock oscillator or you can put your own external crystal on. Well, here's all the pins they're showing you how, where everything goes and how it all hooks up. See like they have a external oscillator on board. That is a 32 kilohertz uh, crystal oscillator, and it uses jumpers. And this board comes with like a zillion jumpers, and you can, if you connect these jumpers up, well, then you can connect this 32 kilohertz uh, oscillator up to your to, to your deal. And that's used, that's probably for the RTC. I think there's an RTC on board uh, for this guy. This guy has a real-time clock uh, inside of the chip as well, so that's the that's the clock for it. Yeah, 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 T1 oscillator, T1 oscillator, yeah, T1 oscillator, whatever, the, I guarantee that's probably what it goes to. I, I haven't pulled the data sheet up for this 18F97J60. We probably, we'll pull that up probably here in a second, and I'll show you what, what all is on board one of these, one of these chips. But for right now, I want to just show you how it's connected. And more, more ground, or power, and, you know, whatnot. 
So that's pretty much what you have to do. Oh, excuse me for just a second. Okay, sorry about that. Let's see now. Uh, okay, where are we at? Sorry, I had a phone call there for a second. If you heard that, uh, problem. Anyway, um, back to where we're at. Scroll down here to here we go. Okay, this is the rest of our connections. As you can see up here, there's like a whole bunch of LEDs that are connected to RJ76543, all those, uh, as well as some push buttons. There's a two pole switch, it looks like. Um, oh, okay, they got just hooked up single. For mem clear, is a mem clear reset. Um, there's some other switches and buttons and things that you can put on. So just some kind of I.O. They even have, as you can see, they even have a, uh, oh, looks like a potentiometer. So you can test the analog digital converter that's in it. It goes to AN2. <coughs> as well as another external oscillator that you can add if you want to. So it looks like they've got pretty much everything. And so it's got all that stuff. Okay, let's see. <clears throat> now, here is that external one I was telling you about. <clears throat> it's the ENC28J60. This is an external uh, TCP IP uh, hardware. So what it does is it's basically the same thing. It's, uh, it's, it's the hardware to communicate uh, via TCP IP, except instead of it being integrated into the chip, it is external. So they give you an external one. Here's all of its different hookups. It looks like you got there's the TP out. Let's see, obviously they named this net uh, TPN TP out two. So since it's the second one, uh, that goes to a, uh, whatever it is, goes to, in fact, I think it's on this. Yeah, it is, it's right here. This this is the your actual, all your transformers and stuff, your isolation transformers for your uh, RJ45 connector is what this is. And so, there's where your TP, your yeah TP in, your TP out. Here is the yeah, it's it's SPI is what it is. You've got your uh, serial in, your clock, um, and all your stuff for your uh, SPI is what you have that for. It has the external 25 megahertz uh, crystal oscillator. You need that um, for the TCP/IP stuff. All the different decoupling capacitors and and whatnot. So it's pretty much got. Everything that the main chip did is just it's external, so that's the difference. Then down here, what they got, <clears throat> and I'll show you what <clears throat> some of this stuff means. What all of this is, is you've got your RJ45 connector with your isolation transformers inside, uh, 75 ohm stuffs. What this does is this provides uh, isolation. It's also for noise, um, anything else, so nothing can get into it. Plus, it also provides magnetic isolation. Um, it's basically a one-to-one -one transformer. For those of you that don't know uh, why you would use, let's say, like a one-to-one -one transformer where, where you get absolutely zero transforming, what it's for is it's for magnetic isolation because, you know, a transformer is magnetically isolated. So that's what that's for. And then you've got some pull-up resistors and whatnot that are going through here. See the PIC VDD? Got some pull-up resistors that are in here as well as this 120 ohm. What this is is this... Uh, it's not really an inductor per se. It's what's called a ferrite bead. It's for EMI uh, suppression. Uh, that way you, you protect your inputs from any type of uh, harmonic and EMI problems and any types of fields or whatever. Ferrite beads will absorb that. So they're, they've got some 120 ohm ferrite beads. They've also got some 56 picofarad uh, capacitors on here. It adds a little bit of capacitance to the line uh, probably for so that way you make sure and your speeds are are there that way it kind of takes up the latency that these guys cause see because if you add any capacitance or inductance on the line you're going to mess with your speeds and you want the 10100 mbps so if you want that then you're going to have to make sure that you don't have any stray capacitances and inductances or anything weird on the line because that will affect your slew rates which will affect your speed and then of course here's your tp out positive and negative and then your uh TPN positive negative and also your indicator LEDs you've got a couple of LEDs here that's your normal uh, link light and your activity light that's what those two guys are and so it's showing that you've got those guys now here's this funny little region here what this is it says polarity switch well the polarity switch um, is there uh, as it's the auto polarity switch what it's for is uh, it's it's there because 10 base T Ethernet uh, signaling is polarized and uh, the this family of PIC microcontrollers, this 18F97J60, uh, whatever it is, 
uh, that family of microcontrollers does not implement an auto polarity feature. So and it, what it does is it normally and it, it'll normally prevents all RX you basically receive uh, communication with the non IEEE uh, 802 dot something uh, compliant link parameters. Is what it is. So in order to, to get around that, what they do is they uh, implement a, a piece of circuitry here um, that does the auto switching for you, which is, is this right here. And that's what that little section is showing you. And it's taken care of for you. Everything's all taken care of for you uh, in the TCP IP stack. That's what uh, will take care of it. What it'll do is it swaps the RX and RX plus and RX minus signals before reaching the TPN and TP, you know, TPN plus TPN minus uh, stuff. So that uh, that takes care of that uh, polarization uh, for 10 base T stuff. So it's what that's for. So that's what that funny looking thing is uh, for. Whereas this guy, I believe that this guy, that's another uh, thing that's good is with this external controller. I think this guy does though. I think this guy just goes ahead and takes care of it. Hence why you don't have to have this polarity switch uh, for this guy uh, is the external guys take care of this and I actually have some of these so I may go ahead and scribe a board and play with this uh, very simply uh, to make sure it works outside of just going ahead and uh, doing the dev kit but uh, for right now just want to show you how the software works and whatnot so we're going to use the dev kit but honestly to tell you guys the truth <clears throat> that's pretty much it um, if you go on down to the final page you've got a max uh, 3232 which is probably just a uh, receiver transceiver for RS-232, because I believe it does have a bootloader on it. Um, tell you the truth, I haven't had much time to read a whole bunch about this uh, dev kit, but I think it has a bootloader on it, so you can do bootloader uploads and things like that, as well as just general RS-232 uh, communication. Uh, oh yeah, it also has a temperature sensor, so that's kind of neat. It's hooked to an analog port. has like a little thermo thermometer that's on the board, so you can... I don't know, measure ambient temperatures and stuff. I mean, it's just, uh, dev kits are great because they're just a, they're just a hodgepodge of random stuff for you to play with. So it so makes those kind of cool. Then you've got a couple of regulators. you got a 5 volt and a 3.3 uh, regulator rails. you got uh, uh, some reverse voltage protection there is what that looks like. Uh, just a 4006, yeah, one in 4006, that's plenty. Um, and then, of course, your connector plus your LCD screen. Um, oh, it looks like there's, I was looking at it, it has two of them, but I guess what it is, is I think there's a, there's a spot for another one, for like a flat flex cable to be installed, uh, but it's not, uh, yeah, we, we, ours is just this guy up here, it's just the standard, I think it's the LCD one, it's marked on the board, I don't remember, anyway, uh, oh, looks like there's even a fourth slot, holy crap. So yeah, okay, so you can have lots of LCD screens on this thing. I think, like I said, there's only one, uh, I think, dot matrix LCD. It's like a 16 by 2 dot matrix LCD screen on board, actually on the board. Um, and the rest are just connectors, if you want. I think one is a, a just a vertical pin, like 10th inch pin header. And the, uh, the other one, like I said, is one of those flat flex connectors, which I can't remember the pitch on that. I don't know, it's like one and a half millimeter or something like that pitch uh, flat flex connector and then of course they're going to give you all the different connectors there's a bunch of jumpers and and just mating connectors like see here's lcd character display port so there's the port it has all that on there um there's the pigtail remember me telling you about that there's the pigtail daughter board connector uh and that's it looks like that's it so basically um, in a nutshell it's pretty easy to understand in fact I kind of drew I was in the process of drawing kind of like a simple drawing but I figured I could probably show it to you guys just as easily with 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 their stuff but basically if I can get it here we go simple simple simplified drawing is uh, one that I've drawn here and basically you've got your your receive and transmit essentially once they come through here you got your TP out plus and minus You've got your TPN plus and minus, your ferrite beads, your decoupling caps, your pull-up resistors, and all that jazz. And then it just basically connects here and there. And then of course, you know, I didn't show it, but you know, you put all your power and ground, your VDD, VSS, you know, or there's another one. There's VDDs there, and VSS is there again. VDD, VSS, and there's even one on this side somewhere. VSS is on this side. VDD, VSS. 
So, you know, you, you hook up your power in your ground, essentially, and your mem clear, wherever that is. There it is, mem clear. Hook up your mem clear, essentially, like we normally do. And then just latch one of these bad boys onto this 18F uh, 97J60 chip. And honestly, I think you're good to go. <clears throat> Um, I don't think there's any, uh, there's no external memory. They use the internal memory of this. In fact, let's go ahead. I, I mentioned that earlier that we would look at the, uh, the whatever it is, the data sheet for this bad boy. And I think I do have it. Let's see what this is. No, that's the external one. This is the, see, this is the ENC28J60, the standalone Ethernet controller with SPI. So it is SPI, yeah. You can get it in DIP even. You can get it SOP, SOIC, QFN. All those different packages. Let's see. I don't want that. Oh, no, I don't want that either. <clears throat> okay. I want the actual... See if I actually downloaded it. I may, I may not have. I may not have downloaded it. Nope, I didn't download it. So give me just a second. I'm going to pull up a web browser. And I'm going to go to Microchip's website. If I can actually click on it. We'll just type it in. And then I want a data sheet, and I want the PIC 18, oops, 18F 97J60, I believe was what this was. Wasn't that what this was? was 97J60? I think so. Yep. So let's get that data sheet real quick. <clears throat> okay. So it's loading. Oh, the wonders of loading. Okay. So here's our data sheet for our actual micro. Well, it's still loading. I'll give it a minute. Let's go, buddy. All right, here we go. That yeah, looks familiar. All right, let's get a... The only thing I hate about Chrome is you don't get the, the outline, so you got to, like, scroll. Oh, here we go. Oh, this is the 66, J. No. This is the 86, 85, no. This is the 96, 60, 97, J60. There we go. See that? So, 97, J60. All right, so this is what all's in this bad boy. So it's got a whole bunch of ports of... Pretty much everything you could possibly ever want to have in there. It's got some memory system, bit of internal peripheral interface program counter. Oh, that's nice. Mm, it's got some ROM. Let's see, it's got oh, it's even got a voltage regulator in it. Well, that's cool. Well, anyway, here's uh, it's got comparators. It's got uh, ADCs, timers, UARTs, Master Singer serial port. That's your spies and your other stuff. And then, of course, Ethernet. It's got the Ethernet on it. Uh, it's ECC, PCCP. It's got all that stuff. So, yeah, so it's got quite a few things um, on it. Okay, so it's got a lot of that stuff. This, what the CCP stuff is, is the capture and compare, or capture, compare, and PWM, basically, is, I think, and then one's enhanced, and uh, that's basically your, your comparators and your PWM generators and your, all that stuff. That's what that is. So anyway, pretty good family. Uh, it's, pre it's a pretty good guy. Has a lot of cool stuff on it. But anyway, but the main thing is that Ethernet, that Ethernet port because that's actually embedded in it. And the uh, master synchronous serial port, or serial synchronous port, whatever it is, the MSSP. <clears throat> Basically, these two things are the, the, two, the two big pieces that make this whole work, because you have the Ethernet that is, is the TCP IP hardware already on board, ready to go. Uh, you just got to code it through the TCP IP stack. Then there's if you want to play with the external one using SPI or SPI, which I think stands for Serial Peripheral Interface or something like that. That's done through the master serial or master synchronous serial port or serial synchronous port, whatever, whichever, however, you, whichever way that is. I forgot. Um, it's taken care of through that. That's what that is. So anyway, pretty good stuff. So that's basically in a nutshell the pick dem. Uh, .NET 2 kit that we are going to be using. That's basically how it's laid out. That's how you wire up this stuff. You basically, um, what I'm probably going to do for the demo for like that kind of like the poor man's way of doing this is I'm probably going to scribe my own board. I'm probably going to throw down, uh, I don't know, like an 886 on there. I'll probably throw down some external memory because the 886 doesn't have enough internal memory to store web pages. So I'll probably throw some external memory down, maybe some, I don't know, 128. 
kilobytes of flash or something like that. I don't know. Um, throw down some external memory that's I squared C in, and then I'll probably throw down uh, one of those uh, ENCJ 26J60s or whatever that is. That you know, what is that? Is that the number? Did I say that right? Yeah, the ENC 28J60. I'll probably throw one of these down. Put it into an 886. An 886 has a, has a Master Singer serial port, which so I can do SPI with it. So I'll probably do spy over that there, and then throw down one of these uh, connectors. I probably won't bother with all the EMI filtering and everything. It's it's, it's fine. I'm not I'm not gonna be going for the, the the maximum speed I can possibly get. You know, I'm, I'm not you know planning on running this as a professional thing. I'm just gonna play with it. Um, so anyway. I probably won't do all the filtering if I just throw the, the pull-ups and stuff on there, and that's probably good enough. And then, um, yeah, that's basically it. And so that's what I was meaning for those of you when I was telling you about that you could probably do this cheaper than um, using a Raspberry Pi. Now, with a Raspberry Pi, you probably have uh, way better speeds because I'm sure all the uh, connections are probably impedance matched and all that stuff. That's another thing. If you're going for speed... You have to do the the circuit board is part of the circuit because depending on how close you put traces how wide the traces are what the thickness of the copper layers are how many layers you have where the layers are or at least the the data traces that you're running where where those are at if they're inside the board or outside the board or if they're close to anything they're close to power rails or close to any type of uh, harmonic generators like a uh, uh, like a switcher you know a, we call them switchers but a uh, uh, switching mode regulator, you know, they generate all kinds of noise. And so it depends on all that. So even just the placement of the circuit board matters when you're trying to squeeze every last, you know, megabit per second out of it that you can or bit per second out that you can. Um, then all of that matters. Me, I'm not going to go for that. I just want to go for it works. So I'm just going to scribe my own board. It won't be anything super fancy. <clears throat> so basically, if you want something that more or less works, works fairly efficiently, it's not, you know, you're not going to be shoving you know gigabytes down this thing you just want some quick little controller you could probably build this thing for fairly cheap um the parts are not expensive i can't remember what i paid for them when i ordered them but they're not they're not expensive so you could probably build one of these pretty easily and i probably will just to just to try it just to just just to make sure that nobody gets angry at me in the comments says well you can't build this for cheap you know maybe i'll try to do it i'll go ahead and try to do it and See, uh, see what it comes out with. But for now, just for for sake of, of time and everything else, we're just going to go ahead and roll with the dev kit right now. Um, get this thing all rolling. I'm going to try to work on the software as much as I possibly can, get that all ready and get, get it filmed and everything so you guys can see it. And we should be good to go with this building your own embedded web server uh, tutorial that we're going to do. So, And like I said, I may, in between the software stuff, because I'm sure there's going to be multiple parts to the software, um, I may sprinkle some other stuff in there, some other videos and whatnot, so that way it's not just completely monotonous. All right, well, guys, this video's gone way long enough. I've rattled too much. It's time to go. Hope you guys have a good day, have a good week, good whatever. Hope you had a good summer. Summer's about over. We're about into fall again. It's crazy. Time flies. So enjoy the rest of your summer, guys. Take care. Keep coding. Keep building cool stuff. Let me see it, too. I love to see uh, you guys, what you guys have made and what you guys are building. I've heard of some really good stuff out there. So make some videos. Uh, show me what you've done. I think it's really cool to see uh, fellow hobbyists and engineers doing their things. So take care, guys. Thanks again for watching. Like, subscribe, and share. And I'll catch you on the, on the next one. Uh, with that, that ought to do it.